So Marty is kidnapped and dragged all the way to Mexico where he's brought in front of Omar. And as he's trying to explain why it's so difficult for him to launder at this current time, Omar just cuts him off and says, what do you want? Marty says, I don't understand the question. And then they drag him off and throw him in this pit. Now, Ruth and Ben were following the SUV, but unfortunately they had to stop and turn around. So they immediately head to Wendy's and start explaining to Wendy and Helen who the guys were that took Marty. And when Helen hears the description of these guys, she knows it's bad, which forces Ben to press Wendy on what exactly is going on. And she finally reveals that they're working for a Mexican drug cartel. Wendy's pretty frantic at the moment, wants Helen to get in touch with Omar, but she says, that's not a good idea. You just never know exactly how he's going to act. And when Jonah and Charlotte return home from being on the lake, they immediately notice that Marty is gone. Wendy makes up a lie that he's in Kansas City for business, but Charlotte knows that that's a lie. As Helen is leaving, she tells Wendy that if they don't hear about Marty by the morning, she better start thinking about what to tell the kids. But that morning when Wendy wakes up, she doesn't have an update on Marty, but she's reluctant to tell the kids that anything's going wrong. Unfortunately, Ben took it upon himself to tell the kids. And Wendy is furious. They start fighting outside until they're interrupted because Helen has arrived with news. She tells Wendy that Marty is alive, but right now it's business as usual. And if they succeed with this, it means Marty's expendable. But if they don't succeed, it means that they might be expendable. And at the moment over in the Missouri Bell, it's all on Ruth. She meets with FBI agent Miller, and Miller finds it interesting that Marty is out of town and didn't tell her that he was going out of town. So even with this nosy FBI agent, Ruth knows that she has to launder money. She comes up with this idea to get 10 people and give them $9,000 each because $10,000 needs to be reported. And they're going to walk into the casino and they're going to lose $8,000 and keep $1,000 for themselves. She tells all these guys, you better have a story on why you have $9,000 because the FBI is all over this place. So I don't care what the story is, but make sure that you have a story. And one of the guys that's going to do this is Ben. But when Wendy shows up and gives Ruth the money, she sees Ben and doesn't want him involved in this. But Ruth reminds her that we need bodies and we need people we can trust. And he fits both those criteria. So all these people head into the casino with their $9,000, and when FBI agent Miller arrives, Ruth hands over the ledgers, but immediately she notices that it's weird. It's a weird influx of cash, because there's the same amount of foot traffic, but a lot more money. Ruth starts making excuses, but agent Miller says, you know what, I'm going to walk the floor. And the first person she sees is Wendy's brother, Ben. And she's wondering how a substitute teacher has all that money, but he's saying it's because my sister's rich. She also tries to catch Ben by saying that Marty's sick, but everyone's sticking to the same story, and Ben says, Marty's not sick, he's in Kansas City for business. And at this point, Ruth's seen enough, and she interjects and says, I'm going to have to ask you not to bother the players. Agent Miller reluctantly walks away, but as she's doing show, she's saying, that's fine, I'll be back tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day. And this is a reminder that the FBI isn't going anywhere for a long time. Agent Miller then decides to head off and talk to Wendy, and she shows Wendy a picture of the guy who took Marty and says, do you know who this is? But Wendy plays it dumb and says, no, I have no idea. She tells Wendy that the FBI believes that Marty was kidnapped on U.S. soil. And if he was kidnapped and taken to Mexico, then the U.S. government has jurisdiction to go into Mexico and get him back. But Wendy is sticking to her story that Marty is simply in Kansas City. Agent Miller gives her a card and says, you call me anytime, day or night, I will answer. And she's trying to throw Wendy and her family a lifeline. The next day, the group finds out that Ruth's money laundering skills aren't nearly as good as Marty's, and the Panamanian account that they often put money in has now been frozen. And everybody, including Helen, thinks the jig is up. They're just waiting for Omar to find out about this the next day and send kill orders. Ruth especially feels like she's to blame, and Ben heads over because he's got a crush on her, and he's been trying to get in her pants. And his persistence pays off as she kisses him goodnight and then heads into her trailer. When Ben heads home that night, though, Wendy is staring at the FBI agent's card and just bawling her eyes out, breaking down, and Ben tries to comfort her. Because at the moment, nobody has any idea what's going on with Marty. And Marty's being kept in this pit and kind of tortured a little bit. And when he's asked again what he wants, he says, I just want to see my family, but that's such a corny response that Navarro just slaps him. Navarro then comes to him later on and wants to know why he's spying on his wife and if he trusts Wendy. And he lets him know that Wendy's somebody who wants it all and he respects that. Marty even had a breaking point where he tells Navarro that he hopes he loses the drug war and that they cut his head off. To which Navarro says, all right, at least we're getting somewhere. But when the Panamanian accounts were frozen, Navarro needs Marty. So he calls him in and Marty passes the test. He's able to get the red flag taken off the Panamanian account. And while Navarro's impressed, he's not willing to let him go just yet. Finally, Marty comes to him and says, all right, I know what I want. I want to launder money the way I want to when I say it's safe. And that'll be when I'm able to compromise an FBI agent. Navarro's a little taken aback about this, and he says, just give me about four or five months, and I'll have this FBI agent working for us. Navarro wants to know if that's the only thing he wants, and Marty says, you know what? No, I I want you to actually say thank you. I want you to thank me. And while Navarro's not willing to do that, he is willing to take Marty back, and the cartel drops Marty off right in front of his house. Thank you so much for watching this recap of Ozark, not Ozarks. People get really upset when you put the S on it. If you don't see the next video up in the corner there on the end screen, don't worry, it'll be up shortly. Please consider subscribing to this channel, liking this video, and there's a share button for a reason.